Welcome to our weekly worship service at Greenwood United Methodist Church in Greenwood, Florida, via YouTube and live audience. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that in your grace, you offer the free blessing of salvation to all who will trust in Christ as Savior. Thank you that Jesus loved us so much that he became a curse for us and died in our place so that by faith in his finished work on Calvary, we might be born from above and receive the many unconditional blessings of his resurrected life. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's message is coming from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. And scripture state, this day I call the heavens and the earth against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. The word of God for the people of God. Today's message is titled, Life is the Total of All Our Decisions. Life is the Total of All our decisions. Let's get into this message. Have you ever been challenged with making decisions? I think we all have. What should I fix for dinner? What should I wear today? Where should I invest my money? Who should I date? And so on and so on. You get the idea. Some decisions though, some are big, bigger than others. Some are small, smaller than others. So the question is, what is the process we use or you use for making decisions? Martha Beck, American author, life coach and speaker in a 2022 article called Decision Decisions stated countless wise men have advised us to make decisions based on our rational objectivity rather than from an emotional demeanor. Know this, there are people that are intuitive and make decisions because they trust their gut. I've heard that Irvin is just a, a gut decision they're making more than their brains. These individuals often take flying leaps without little information. And then there are those they have little trust in their cognitive reasoning, nor do they rely on their instincts. Therefore, these folks normally follow the path of least resistance. They place all their trust in their mind alone. They place no faith in their hearts. These people normally stall and wait and contrast and brew forever, insisting that with just a little more knowledge, with just a little more knowledge, their choice will be made clear. You know, we're all wired differently. And some of us are bent more right brain and others are bent more left brain. Depending on who you talk to, that stuff matters. However, however, the question demands an answer for each person hearing my voice. What is your ultimate strategy in making a decision. Know what the Bible says. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 12 verse 30 to love God with all your soul, spirit, mind, and strength. So there are several components that are involved in our responses to decisions. A quick story. A woman from Florida was driving through the mountains west of Denver, Colorado when she ran into an awful snowstorm. She was completely lost. And she peered ahead and saw a four-wheel pickup truck with one of those big blades, snow blades on the front of it. Since she was lost, she, she decided to follow the truck. And she kept as close to the machine as she possibly can while it moved snow from the road. At times, the blowing snow almost cut off her view. But she kept following the snow truck. A truck would go up the hill, 
get to the top, make a U-turn and go back down the hill. But this lady, this lost lady made the decision to keep following that truck. And after about the third time, that truck went up the hill and down the hill. The truck stopped. The driver got out, walked over to the lady's car and said, lady, where are you going? He asked. She said, I'm on my way to Denver. The truck driver replied, well, you will never get to Denver following me because I'm just plowing my driveway. You didn't get it. The decisions we make. The question, how do you make decisions? What is your road map for making sound, satisfying, well thought out decisions? There are some people that make their decisions by searching through their horoscopes. There are some people who go to the internet and trust total strangers to make decisions for them. However, God has placed us on this earth, God has, with some decisions to make. He gave us the freedom to decide what route we're going to follow as best stated in today's scriptures. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. If you do not know what a decision is, a decision is to wake, make up your mind to determine what direction you are going or the direction you are not going. We constantly do that all the time. A decision distinguishes us strong from weak. A decision determines success or failure. And then for those who are us who cannot ever make a decision, indecision can cause us to lose. Indecision can cause one to be lost or to be in the need of saving. So you say, I don't have to do nothing. Doing nothing is a decision. But consider a few examples from the Bible of individuals who made devastating decisions with demoralizing results. Eve's decision to eat the forbidden fruit brought death. Lot chose Sodom, but he lost all he had. Samson chose Delilah, but he lost his power. And finally, death and the prodigal son left home and went into the muds of sin. Now consider from the Bible, remarkable individuals who made the right decisions. Moses made the right decision. When by faith, when by faith, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to, it, than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Joshua made the right decision when by faith he chose for himself in his household to serve the Lord. Solomon made the right decision. When by faith, he chose wisdom over riches and power. Daniel made the right decision. When by faith, he chose not to defile himself with raw food and wine. And if you did not know, God provides us with a formula for making the right decisions through his words as written in the Holy Bible. For example, we can always ask God for directions. And scripture backs it up in James 1, 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. We can always seek his will in his word. In Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We can always trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. We can always seek the advice of godly men and women as supported by scriptures in Proverbs eleven fourteen, for lack of guidance, a nation falls, but many advisors make victory Sure. Let us admit it. Let us admit it. Most of us think we can figure things out on our own. We can do fine just by ourselves, preacher. Thank you. But if we're serious about making wise decisions, 
if we're serious. We must fight against her internal inclination to trust in our own understanding. And scripture supports that in Proverbs 28, 16, where it states, if you think you know it all, you are a fool for sure. Real survivors learn wisdom from others. Again, I remind everyone here in my voice of what is written in Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Circle the word all. The verse does not say some. The verse does not say most of your ways. The verse says all of your ways. It means in everything we do, in every detail of our lives, acknowledge God. Why are decisions so important? Because our lives is the total of all our decisions and corresponding actions. Because our thoughts create actions. Because our actions create habits. Because our habits create character. And because our character creates our destiny. Our lives, our lives is a total of all our decisions. Another example. When the interstate highway system began construction in the 1950s across these United States, the planners looked for the least hilly areas to construct the roads. And when they decided on the route, they then went to work to knock down the smaller hills and fill in the valleys to make the roads as flat as possible. But you know what? Some roads still go over the mountains. Some roads still go through the valleys. Some roads still follow the raging rivers. Some roads follow the quiet streams. Some roads go through arid deserts. Some roads go through lush green pastures. We may have to travel through the valley of the shadow of death. But the promise God made to us is that he will be with us and that he will make our paths straight. God's word tells us that life is a journey that goes up into the mountains one day and swerves into the swamp the next day. Sometimes the road is washed out or filled with perilous potholes. However, when we make the decision, when we make the decision to give God first place in our lives and in our hearts and trust him totally, God will straighten our paths and even remove what we think are insurmountable obstacles. And now as my and now as I close, my ultimate question to everyone here in my voice is have you made your decision about Christ? And I give you a final example. A pastor was called to a new church. The first son of the pastor was there, his message was taken from John 3:16, and we know that. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The message was titled, How to Be Born Again. The message was well received, but no decisions were made. The second Sunday, the pastor's message was taken from John 3.16 and was titled, How to Be Born Again. Again, no decisions were made. The third Sunday, the pastor's message was taken from John 3.16 and it was titled, How to Be Born Again. And again, no decisions were made. And by this time, the deacons, those old deacons, were worried about what was happening because the new preacher just kept preaching the same sermon over and over again. So they decided to call a special meeting and confront this new pastor to discuss why he keep preaching the same sermon over and over again. And one deacon said, do you have any more sermons? The new pastor replied, yes, I have plenty of sermons. However, I'm going to keep preaching this sermon until we get it right. Then I will move on to something else. 
the final question, the final question, have we made the decision to put Jesus off or come to him? Our lives is the total of all our decisions. Amen. Just perhaps. Perhaps my message touched someone in a way, in a special way. In a way so special that if you want now to give your life to Jesus, then repeat this message, you will be saved. If you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess it with your mouth, then you're saved. It's just that simple. You don't have to do anything special about that decision just to accept Jesus into your life. Confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And if you made that decision today, we rejoice with you and are excited about your decision to accept Jesus into your life. And now as I bring this sixth Sunday of Epiphany worship service to a close, God help us to make right decisions. Help us to choose wisely between the options that are set before us. Protect us from clouded judgment and bless us with a sound mind. Lord, please help us to decide. Let all that we do bring honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen.